Hi, everyone. Thanks again for joining us for another episode of the Fun Talks podcast. On today's episode, we're talking about giving back in the community and we're featuring Fenna Moore's business litigation attorney, Andrea Marconi. So Andrea, thanks so much for being here. We're getting ready to head into the holiday season and giving back is definitely this time of year, it's highlighted. And so I know as somebody that's so personally committed to this, um, I thought you were the perfect one to highlight on today's episode. So Andrea, I know there probably are people out there in the business world that haven't had the opportunity to meet you in person or review your bio. So would you mind just sharing a little bit more about your background? Of course. Well, of course, my name is Andrea Marconi, and I'm a proud business litigation attorney at Fenimore. I also serve as co-chair of the business litigation group. And in my personal life, I'm a proud mom of two boys, a teenager and a preteen. So I'm very busy. And in my free time, which is very small, I love to travel. And in fact, we just got back from a whirlwind trip to Italy as a family. So it's been really fun. I know. I'm thinking maybe our next episode will have to be talking about all your travel tips for going to Italy because it sounds like you had quite the quite a fun trip. You did. Um, all right. Well, I'm curious. You know, not everybody when they're a small child aspires to be an attorney, but I'm curious just to hear a little bit more about your story. So, when you were a kid, when you were dreaming of what you would be when you grew up, what was it? You know, it's kind of funny. I don't come from a background of attorneys. No one else in my family is an attorney. But I always knew I wanted to be a lawyer. And um, I kind of joke and, and thank my father for it. Uh, growing up, we would have these ardent um, debates at the dinner table growing up. And the topics range from everything. They could be really serious, like history or politics, um, or just got into, you know, which musical band was better. Or sometimes my choice of boyfriend at the time was also a hot topic of debate. But those dinner table debates with my dad growing up really honed my oral advocacy skills. And he said, you know, someday you just need to get paid for this. So here I am. And I always knew I wanted to be a lawyer. So as a marketing and business development professional, I'm all about branding, whether that's on a professional organizational standpoint or helping attorneys to do that. And Andrea, you've done a remarkable job as far as building your brand and your reputation out there in the business community. You were recently nominated as a Greater Phoenix Chamber Athena Award nominee, and you just won an award through Arizona Capital Times as a 2021 Woman Achiever. So congratulations on all of those recognitions. Very excited for you. Um, but you know, I know a lot of that has stemmed from your commitment to philanthropy and being involved in the community. So would you mind just talking a, a little bit more about your personal and community philanthropic efforts? Sure. You know, I've had a number of different philanthropic efforts throughout my life. One of the most important things to me, other than my family and bringing up my boys, is being involved in the community because the community has given so much to me and I feel it's really important to give back. Currently, um, my most highly involved philanthropic endeavor is I serve as chair of the board of the Arizona Humane Society. I've served as board chair now for the past three years and been on the board for many years. Um, in the past three years, we've we've been through a lot. We've led the organization through COVID-19, as many other groups have, which has been quite interesting. And uh, the biggest and nearest dear to my heart there is I've been involved in the capital campaign to transform animal welfare, raising funds for a new facility that will be our flagship at Papago Park. Um, and we are breaking ground in early November. So by late 2022 or early 2023, this new regional medical facility will be a reality and will change things for pets in Arizona. So that's that's one of the things I'm really proud about. I also really spend a lot of time working with children and women's efforts. Um, in the past year, I've been lucky enough to be a co-founder and vice president of the board of directors for No Cares. And No Cares is a foundation that is meant to help uh, women entrepreneurs and business leaders grow and have educational opportunities. We provide grants for women entrepreneurs, um, provide leadership and development opportunities, and also emergency business funds. And we're hoping to also engage worldwide in second and third world countries to provide schools and other educational opportunities for women. So those have been some of my, my more recent philanthropic endeavors. 
So I'm curious with being involved with the Arizona Humane Society, does that mean you get to hold some puppies and kittens every once in a while? I definitely hold some puppies and kittens. And as my husband says, I bring probably too many of them home, but that's okay. Um, I love the farm I've developed at my house here. So a big date that's coming up in November is Tuesday, November 30th, which is Giving Tuesday. A lot of nonprofit organizations tend to shed some light and talk about their organization and how different business leaders and community partners can step up and help out. So I know there are so many great ones to choose from, but I'm just curious, what are the organizations that you're personally going to be committed to helping out on Giving Tuesday this year? Absolutely. Well, of course, the Arizona Humane Society is always number one on my list. So I will be uh, giving on Giving Tuesdays. I do many days to the Arizona Humane Society. But um, I've also become more involved with Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Central Arizona recently. And I'm working on their committee uh, for their Big Night Out Gala event in 2022. So I will be supporting Big Brothers. And also, I love to support on Giving Tuesday and through the Arizona uh, Charitable Tax Credits, Junior Achievement of Central Arizona. They do such a phenomenal job helping provide students and youth with life skills, um, financial literacy and learning in schools. And that, to me, is very near and dear to my heart. And then another uh, philanthropic endeavor I've learned about recently through a good friend of mine is the Diaper Bank of Central Arizona. Um, She helps run that. Um, in addition to running a very big company here in town. And I will be donating to the Diaper Bank, who helps provide such a critical supply to families in need, especially important right now. Awesome. There are a number of great organizations out there. appreciate you sharing a little bit more about some of the ones that you're really passionate about. Um, Hopefully that inspires some other individuals to get further involved this year. So for those individuals tuning in for today's episode. They're feeling inspired through Andrea and all of your hard work. um, And they feel like they want to get more involved with philanthropic efforts. Do you have any advice for them? I would say find what you're passionate about, because if you are passionate about the cause, the organization, then you are going to be much more willing and able to donate your time your talent and your treasures to that organization. Um, So if you're new to the Valley or new to philanthropy, I would say talk to your friends, talk to your network, find out what other people are involved in because you can get some great ideas. In fact, some of the organizations that I'm new to sponsoring, I have learned about through people in my network or friends and learned what they're passionate about. And then I've realized I share the same passion. Um, And it's very easy to get involved here in town. Literally, if you find an organization that you want to help out, you can go to their website and they'll tell you all the different ways to volunteer. You can pick up the phone and call somebody there if you don't have someone in your network. But of course, I always go to my network first and learn that way. I like that you brought up the idea of leveraging your network. I think it's always better to volunteer and get involved when you have a friend or family member to go and do it with you. So that's a great tip there. Um, Okay, so we're wrapping up. 2021 Q4 is here. We're approaching the holiday season. We're preparing for 2022, which is so crazy to say. Um, But with that, many of us are establishing our goals for next year. So curious if you have any specific goals that relate to your philanthropic efforts that you would like to share with our audience. Yes. I mean, of course, at the Arizona Humane Society, we are going to have that shovel in the ground on our new facility and be taking 2022 to make that a reality and build it. So I will be heavily involved in that effort and very excited to do so. I've also, uh, in the past year, joined the board of directors at the Chandler Chamber of Commerce. I'm a proud uh, resident and member of the city of Chandler, and I'll be really focusing my efforts in 2022 on that organization and helping provide additional training and educational opportunities for businesses. And then also my work there with the Women's Leadership Group in Chandler, helping provide opportunities for leadership among businesswomen in the city. So an underlying theme and a topic that we brought up a couple of times in this conversation is just the importance of networking. And I know you know a ton of people here in town, but there probably are some individuals that you haven't had the luxury of meeting. So if we can put it out there in the world, Andrea, who are those people that you want to meet with on a consistent basis or hear from um, as we enter 2022? You know, I love to meet people who are business owners and just doers in the community. I love to meet people who have a passion like I do for helping others and for making the communities we live and work in a better place. And that's one of the reasons why I'm a Fenimore attorney, because that value is so ingrained in our firm and it just really makes me a proud member. So I'd love to meet other people who are out there doing new things that I can learn about. 
So for those individuals that want to reach out, Andrea, what is the best way for them to get in contact with you? Uh, well, of course, uh, by email or, or phone is a great way to reach me. Um, you can find me on the Fenimore website. Um, my email is amarconi at fenimorelaw.com. And my phone is also on there and it's 602-916-5335. Wonderful. You can well, also I- see me on LinkedIn, um, Facebook, and Instagram as well. Yes, definitely follow her on social media. She's doing some great work there. All right. Well, as we'd like to wrap up today's conversation, is there anything else that you'd like to leave our audience with? You know, as as we're talking about giving back and community, I would just encourage everyone to get involved and give back. You know, there are different ways we can give back. It might be your financial resources. It might be your time. It might be your platform. And use the time, talent, and treasures you have to give back to your community because what you give, you will give back. You'll get back tenfold. And it's just so important. And I know we're all busy. Believe me, I know. But it doesn't take a lot of time to make a big impact. Great. Well, Andrea, thanks so much for joining us for this conversation this morning on giving back to the community. Thank you. So nice to have. Thank you. Thank you.